Welcome to Tool Talks. Today we talk about what happens if you want more than one menu screen. All right, so we're almost done with UI, I promise. I wanted to give this tutorial because a lot of people don't connect the dots and figure out the, the right way to do a menu screen and they end up having separate canvases for each menu or worst case scenario, separate scenes. So you don't actually need either of those two things. You simply need multiple panels. I'm gonna give you a proof of concept today. So well, as we wrap up UI, I wanna talk about one more thing and that is the situation if you have multiple menus. A lot of times in games, you're going to have you know, a main menu, a secondary menu, and possibly even a third, although not, not often, um, before you start the game. And it's very tempting to think that you need a separate canvas for each one of these, but you actually don't. So what I've done is I've taken our anchor example, and I've added, I've changed the panel one to be main menu. Then I've, I've added another panel and called it single player game. But in this case, I have disabled it. So you see, but if I, so real quickly, if I disable main menu and I enable single player game, you'll see that I have one button in the middle of the screen that says back. And the idea here is this will be a back button to take me back to the main menu. So you can add it, go ahead and make a new panel, add a button that says back, and then just disable it. And go back to main menu. And what I did is I took a third button, the third button that's anchored around itself, so it scales. I've called that single player. So that sets up how, what we're going to do. I've made a new script called panel handler. And if we open it up, we'll see that the, uh, I've made there's a very simple uh, public void set panel, and I pass in an integer p. If the P is equal to um, zero, I set P1, set active true, P2, set active false, break. If case one, then P1, set active false, P2, set active true. So it inverses each other. What are uh, P1 and P2? They are public game objects. They're actually going to correspond to the panel. And I could, you, you could consider this and realize that I'm essentially going to be scaling this to however many menus I have. They don't have to be in depth either. I could have one main menu and maybe six or seven sub menus, and then the game. A word, of, a rule of thumb is you don't want really you don't really want the user to go through more than two levels of main menus before you get to the actual game. But if it have it has to happen, it has to happen. So this is the code. Again, you can pause the video if you need to. It's uh, fairly simple. If I go back to the Unity now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Canvas and I'm going to add the panel handler. Then I'm going to go to uh, Main Menu and drag it down for P1 and then the single player game and drag it down to P2. A word of warning because we haven't really talked about it. Yes, you can dynamically search for children and you can dynamically search for objects while the game is running. However, if you disable the game object, you will not be able to find it when you search for it. So this is why it's better, uh, best to use these kind of variables to hold pointers to it. Otherwise, you will not be able to find single player game, even though it's there, if it's disabled. The last thing we have to do is we, again, we have to click on button 2, and we have to go and add our, add our canvas object. Then we set panel handler .set panel. And here, notice it takes an integer. It's not a dynamic variable, so we can specify the parameter. In this case, we want one. So panel one is going to be single player. Panel zero is going to be the main menu. Likewise, we have to disable the main menu, enable single player, and add it to the back button. We're going to, again, select the same, same canvas, same script, same method, except this time we're going to pass in a zero. So this is the power of parameterization. So once we have the both on-click menus for both buttons set, I can disable panel, oh, not that one, disable panel two, and I can re-enable the main menu. Now if I run it, you can see that I can click on single player. Now it brings up a new panel, the old panel is disabled. I can hit back and go back to main menu. 
<clears throat> so again, this is a proof of concept of what a multiple panel men uh, menu system might look like. And if you make this canvas object persistent across different rooms, you could actually have your game UI as one of the panels. So maybe panel three or panel four is the actual UI for the game. Um, and you can decide if you want to do that or not, but that's an option that's available to you.